So you're thinking about buying a cheap eBay turbo. You've seen Billy down the road, he's got a 500 pound eBay turbo bolted to his Mark 1 MX-5. He's making all the boost. But what's the real difference between something that costs less than 500 pounds to something that costs 2,000 pounds? Is a cheap turbo really gonna save you money in the long run? Or is it just gonna boost itself into orbit? Let's find out what makes a cheap turbo cheap and what makes an expensive turbo good. Welcome to the channel, my name is Ollie, we're Own Developments and we've been turbocharger and motorsport upgrade specialists for 40 years. If you're interested in learning about aftermarket parts, turbos, boost control and kind of everything in between, we're going to be doing lots of product reviews, how-to guides, answering your Q&As and much, much more. If it sounds like there's something you're interested in, follow along, hit the subscribe button. Oh, and a quick mention before we forget, a uh, shout out to Walton Motorsport. Uh, thanks for the Q&A um, that has inspired this video. Let's get into it. Cheap turbos have come a long way in the past five years. Some of them actually make reasonably good power and actually last a fair few thousand miles. But, you know, there's still a ton of horror stories out there where you hear about them ejecting themselves out of the bonnet or out the back of the car. Eject seat on cars! But now we're seeing ever-growing popularity of the mighty eBay Turbo. Before you get all hyped up on a pocket money turbo, let's not forget, a turbo lives an extremely hard life. It's a very hostile environment by all those exhaust gases. If we take a quick dive into exactly what a turbo does, we can understand why cheap turbos usually have a bitter end. Let's start with the drive. A turbo is powered by exhaust gas, which means the environment it operates in is inherently harsh, with exhaust gases reaching up to 1000 degrees C and a shaft assembly that in some applications spins up to 280,000 RPM. With these figures in mind, it becomes clear the material quality can very easily dictate the life of a turbo. A big difference between RGBT, for instance, and to be honest, many of the high-end sort of performance turbochargers compared to their cheap sort of counterpart is this. This is the turbine wheel. Our turbine shafts are made from Inconel 713. Now this has a melting point of 1,020 degrees Celsius. Obviously, you can imagine, these are quite expensive. If you're looking at a turbo that's sort of in the region of, you know, two to five hundred pounds, there's a strong chance that the turbine wheel is not made of ink now, which is going to melt a long time before what this one does. The next consideration when buying a cheap turbo is the turbine housing. Just like the turbine wheel, this has to deal with extreme temperatures of, you know, upwards of a thousand degrees Celsius. If you're buying a cheap turbine housing, be aware that it's likely to be made from cast iron, which means heat capability isn't great, these tend to distort after a short period of time. The distortion turns into cracks, cracks turn into boost leaks, boost leaks inevitably turn into a form of overdrive, and overdrive, well, that usually leads to a turbo failure. That's not to say that, you know, a high quality turbine housing isn't gonna crack or it isn't gonna distort, but one that's made from a much higher quality material, like stainless steel, for instance, is gonna be able to take a ton more abuse than something that's cheap and poorly cast. The bearing system is also a major component that your turbo relies on, you know, pretty damn heavily. These are either going to be journal bearing or ball bearing. Both have their own advantages and disadvantages, but of course cost plays a big part in selecting the bearing system. With most journal bearings, the quality of the components don't seem to fluctuate that much, as they're quite cheap to make and reasonably reliable in their design. Of course, they don't perform as well as a ball bearing system, but we'll delve into that in another there is, however, quite a big difference in the quality between a high-end ball bearing and, and a cheap one. And if you've bought a turbo with a cheap ball bearing system, you can almost guarantee that's going to be the first thing that lets go when it decides to boost itself to orbit. When it comes to precision machining, strict tolerances and a high level of quality control are absolutely paramount. Precision turbo bearings are some of the best in the world, but for the bearing alone, you're looking at over £500. 
When you're manufacturing a bearing that's capable of many PSI's of boost, it needs to be top shelf. We're talking ceramic balls with unbelievable heat dissipation, low friction qualities and super strict tolerances that ensure buttery smooth rotation. What does a cheap bearing look like? Well, it's likely going to have steel balls, that's the first thing. Ceramic balls are obviously quite expensive, but they work incredibly well at what they're supposed to do. And when it comes to balancing the turbo, which, you know, will play a significant role in how long the turbo lasts, how quick it spools, and how smooth it runs, the bearing system is a vital component. And, well, if it's cheap and it doesn't do its job properly, you know the rest. The last major one of the running components is the compressor wheel. There's tons of compressor wheel designs out there, and much like the other components we've discussed, costs will greatly dictate the quality. You might have heard the word billet being used when referring to components and machining. Well, our HTA compressor wheels are billet aluminium. What does that mean though, and how does it affect your turbo? Compressor wheels, like the ones we use in our GBTs, are machined from a single piece of high quality aluminium. This means that they have great material properties and can withstand huge centrifugal forces that they're subject to when spinning upwards of 150,000 RPM without tearing apart. Being a CNC machine component also means that they can be intricately designed for optimal efficiency and airflow. Like our HGA wheels, these generate tons of boost in the most efficient way possible which maximises the output of the turbo. To give you a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison, this is one of our HTA wheels, and this is just a cast aluminium unit. So this is by no means just a cheap sort of knockoff, you know, counterpart eBay, eBay compressor wheel. It's an OEM quality unit, but when you put them next to each other, the first most noticeable difference, aesthetics aside, is the significant difference in weight when you're going from a, you know, from a cast unit to something that's billet like this. So as you can see, both of these wheels are almost identical in diameter, but when you put them on the scales, you can see that actually it's quite a big difference between the cast wheel and the billet one. And when you take a closer look, you can see that there's a significant difference in actually the aero on the wheel as well. And you know, this is because, as said before, it's a, it's a CNC machined unit. Last but not least is the compressor cover. We all like to see nicely machined covers, ported shroud, anti-surge holes, much like this or this. And to be honest, eBay seem to be delivering on, you know, on the surface what looks kind of similar to what's going on here. Is there going to be a significant difference in the design of one of these compared to eBay counterpart? Let's have a look. In this instance, what doesn't actually matter so much is the properties of the material itself. While obviously that is important and you do want something that's high quality, mainly for aesthetic purposes when it comes to the compressor cover, it's the detail in the actual profile of the compressor cover itself that really makes a difference. And when companies are cutting corners because they're keeping costs low, they're inevitably cutting corners on things like quality control and tight tolerances. Tight tolerances play a huge part in compressor cover design, and if you've got enough room to fit a small family of mice between the cover and the wheel, then it's not going to boost efficiently. Ultimately, power costs money, and if you're going to be buying a top shelf turbo, you can guarantee that it's been built by highly trained staff to exacting tolerances with tons of R&D that's gone into the design of the turbo, so you're just not going to get that with the sort of cheap, low-end budget turbochargers. And ultimately, that's what's going to determine, one, how much boost it's going to make, and two, how long it's going to last boosting. So we'll round this off there. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned something. If you did, then hit the like button. If you didn't, then maybe you'll learn something in the next one. And hopefully we'll, we'll see you there. Thanks for watching.